I want to make a follow-up video to address some issues that came up from my last comparison video, my video between the Zcam E2 S6 and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. I'll put a link in the description below to watch that video. Some of you noticed some things as I was talking about grading and resolve, and it was a good thing you did point these out because you know, I found some issues. So here's what I want to do. I want to show what the issues are that I found and uh, a way to fix these things and talk about just the proper way of grading footage from these two cameras in Resolve. I want to point out this comment here caught my attention by Josh Kidd Films. He says, it looks like something's off, like you've done a Rec. 709 conversion. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That made me, made me think. I'm like, maybe I am doing something wrong. Let me jump into Resolve and we can take a look at what I what is doing wrong, more or less. Um, we'll talk about that. I will say that overall, I was pretty happy with the grade that I got on both these cameras, except for one scene in particular, and that was one of the shots in the carousel. It had kind of this blue color to it, and I didn't like it, and I couldn't really get the image that I want out of it. You can see here side by side, it has kind of a blue color on the black magic, and I just I couldn't really fix it, couldn't get it the way I wanted. So maybe we'll see if this uh, appropriate way of grading makes an improvement in that area. So I was saying that this is how the raw footage looks for me, and it's all blown out, and that's not right. It shouldn't have looked like that. So if you have your settings set correctly, as we'll see, that won't look like that. It'll look more like log footage. Here I'm in Resolve, and I'm gonna jump right into my color settings. You can get there by either going to this gear icon down here in the bottom right corner, or by clicking Shift-9. So right here is color management, and this was my settings for my video. And in fact, I've been using this setting for a very long time. Now, mostly just been working with the Zcam footage and it wasn't a big deal. And even with other footage, it's not a big deal. I'll show you why. First of all, I was in the DaVinci color manage setting, which lets you set all three color spaces for your input, your timeline, and your output. And I had I'd set this to bypass and that's what changed the Blackmagic RAW footage. That's why it doesn't look appropriate in my timeline. Let me switch this to just YRGB. This is what Resolve is in, by default. It's in a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 color space. So it's hit save, and you can see right away there's a change to my footage here. I've graded it with different settings. If we look at just Blackmagic RAW footage, let's come over here. Here's my Blackmagic RAW footage, and now it looks like log footage. Whereas before, when I was in this mode, you can see boom, it has that blown out clipped look. So that's what my problem was, and that's why you guys were pointing out that, hey, there's something wrong with your settings. Your black magic footage should not look like that. And you guys are right, so thank you very much for correcting me and, and pointing out the error of my ways. But now I'm gonna show you why it wasn't the end of the world and it didn't destroy my footage or invalidate my grades. Let's jump into the color page and I'll show you why. Here's the shot of the flowers from my comparison video. I'm going to jump right back into those color settings and set this to the way that I had it, which was in bypass mode for the input color space. So what that's going to do is just going to bring the footage, as Resolve interprets it, right into a Rec. 709 color space without doing any kind of intelligent conversion. It's not going to, not going to look at the profile and go, oh, well, this is supposed to be Blackmagic Film log profile. Let's bring that into Rec. 709 color space. It's just applying a, a generic type of conversion and then this, this is the result. It's kind of an, an unknown result like well, was it what is it starting with? Oh, who knows? It's just ending up here. So the first thing I did was I came down here to the ISO setting and I dropped it all the way to the bottom and that brought it down quite a bit. You can see my waveform is much lower here. It looks much better. And then I applied two curves here. The first one was just a basic highlight roll-off curve. It took the highlights down and my image is already looking really good. And then I did one more curve where I just made the blacks a little bit blacker. Here you can see and didn't really do anything in the highs. And I was happy with this grade and, and it, it looked actually pretty comparable to the grade that I had um, with the uh, S6. So that's what I did to fix this footage. So like I said, this isn't the end of the world grading in this manner. I, I was happy with this result. Now it's not ideal because it's better to allow Resolve to bring this footage into a, a proper space the way it's supposed to be done and then grade from there. But as you can see, uh, this works good. The reason why it works is because uh, Resolve operates in a 32-bit floating point space or whatever it is, which means basically it has a huge uh, mathematical area to work in and you're not gonna destroy your footage by making these kind of grades. Well, let me show you what that looks like. If I come over here and I just blow this 
the heck out of the water. So it's just way overblown right in this node. And then the very next node, I can just bring this right back down and nothing's changed. So this one, it's blown up and now I bring it back down and there's nothing lost, there's nothing clipped. So you can make mistakes more or less and then make adjustments later on and you're kind of safe. Now the only time this doesn't work is if you come over here and you apply a LUT. Let me see if I can find one that's kind of dramatic like one of these. That's the opposite way I want to go. One of these uh, HDR LUTs, it's going to make it really blown out. If I come back in the next node and try to bring it down, you'll see that it doesn't work. LUTs are destructive, so when it clips, it clips hard and that information is lost. So adjustments you make on the color page, the color wheels, those things can be brought back down because they're working in resolves um, really large mathematical space, whereas LUTs are, are hard numbers and you can't go beyond them, they'll just clip. So let's take another look at this carousel scene. So now that I have my color settings uh, back to the default, Resolve is going to apply uh, the appropriate conversion into the Rec 709 color space. So now it looks like log footage. And this is an interesting point. I should have noticed that there was something going on because these two options were grayed out for me before. I couldn't select these two. Apparently when you're in a color managed workflow, see how these get grayed out? It locks them out because it's set by your um, settings over here. So if I dig into that footage, say this was it, this isn't the right one, but this input color space, this is what's determining that setting, I believe. So that's one difference between color managed and non-color managed is that where you set this is in a different place. So let me put a grade on this and we'll compare it to the grade that I had for my other settings. So to grade this shot, I could just be lazy and drop on one of the Blackmagic LUTs. So that's what I did right here. This is the uh, 6K film to video LUT. And I, I don't like it. These highlights are totally clipped. Look at the waveform here. like, And the, even the, the shadows are clipped. If I go to the next node, again, remember that it's not recoverable. That's clipped. The, the blacks are clipped. You can't bring that back. So let's not do that. Let's just reset all these. And I'm going to use, I don't know, let's try the other one, the extended video. It's a little better, the highlights aren't so clipped. Uh, the blacks are clipped still. It's just not fantastic though. It doesn't have a lot of color pop. I think I can do better. So I'm gonna do a manual grade on this one. Just when you think you have it all figured out, they throw you a curve. So I was just in my media page and looking at this footage. This is the carousel shot that I just dragged in. And it says input color spaces, black magic design, pocket 6K, film gen four. That sounds right. Well, this footage is also shot with that same camera. You can see they're all 6K. I had just shot this the other day, and these all say Black Magic Design Film Gen 1. Now, it's not the same physical camera. It's a different camera I bought later on, but it's, they're both the 6K camera. So I'm wondering, does it have a different firmware or something? Like, why would this one has a, have a completely different input color space right out of the camera? I haven't done anything to these clips here. Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So if anybody has any answers to this, please, Drop it down in the, uh, the diddly do below me here so I can understand what the heck is going on with this footage. Here's another look at the side by side that I had originally. The Black Magic had this blue cast to it, and I just couldn't get it the way I liked it. And here's the new grade. And it looks a little better. Not a lot better, but better. Very similar to the Zcam E2 S6. Did the color settings make a difference? Uh, certainly. Um, it made that Black Magic log profile look like black magic log profile and I graded from there and that's the appropriate workflow it does make a difference for most of the other footage like I said I was happy with the grade so I can get there in the end but it probably would have been better and easier if I had started with um, more of the log look with the appropriate color space conversion that resolved us before I wrap up this video, I want to throw out one more question. Here I'm back in my media page again, looking at this uh, carousel footage, and I'm still in my default mode with Rec. 709 timeline. And the reason why I was in this other color managed mode is because I like playing with all the features in the software just to see what I can do with it and what it can do. And my understanding was, if I look at the manual here, the input color space, it says, the default color space that all clips in the media pool to which you've not assigned an input color space will default to you which I'm not quite sure how to interpret that because uh, this footage does have an input color space. It's defined from the camera. Again, these ones have 
uh, an odd color space. I'm not sure why they're saying Gen 1, but this one has the correct one, 6K Gen 4. And you can only change that when you're in the Manage mode. Let me go back into that Manage mode. So you get this option for input color space, and you can pick a color space. So this one has a selected color space. I would expect that this would use my selected input color space, which is the Pocket 6K Gen 4, and just bring that into a Rec. 709 color space. Um, if it didn't, then I should be able to come in here and select 6K Gen 4, and it would assume that everything is the from the 6K camera and bring that into a Rec. 709 color space. But it doesn't do that. It looks like it did before. Um, let me try a different color space. Like, if, okay, what was installed Rec. 709? Gamma 2.4. That would just, wouldn't that be the same thing as, as not having management turned on? I would think. And yet, it still looks blown out. So I'm really confused as to how you can even use this color managed mode. If somebody wants to hit me up with some comments down below, maybe point me to a video, because I, I have a hard time finding videos about this online, and explain why this isn't working like I think it should work, and how I interpret this manual. So that's just another question I have. Now back to the rest of my video. Thanks again for everybody who pointed out the error that was you know, going on. Basically, they led me to the discover that I had my settings incorrect. And uh, from here on out, it'd be uh, interesting to see how it affects my grades down the road. Uh, I'll be working with some other cameras like the Panasonic S1H here coming up soon, um, comparing it to the Zcam E2 F6, the full frame 6K camera. So stay tuned for that one. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button and hit that little notification bell. That way you'll know when I post my next video about these new cameras. I'll see you then.